In Kenya today, the cost of construction continues to rise every day. And just like in other parts of Africa, research institutions have been looking for cheaper alternatives to lower costs and increase access to affordable housing. If you reduce the cost of construction of low-income low housing, you are then encouraging people with low incomes to be able to invest in housing production. Because, again, that is the direction to go, not to expect that government would be able to provide uh, uh, housing for the low-income people, but to enable, empower the low-income people. While such efforts continue, traditional building techniques remain the most commonly used, often consuming a lot of wood. We take a drive down Gong Town and find Nicholas Kinyua, a 31-year-old father of two who has been in the business of block making for two years now. Eh? While the use of interlocking blocks is quite common in developed countries, its use in Africa has been minimal, with most builders opting for stone, concrete, timber and thatch instead. In Kenya, interlocking blocks technique has been here for over 10 years now. Its uh, application has not been widespread. There are no huge investment in low cost, in low income housing in a massive way because of the risks in that particular sector. Uh, and only what you would have is probably governmental investment, which are actually been, not been there for a while. One does not need to have a degree to use this art. Initially, Kinyo had no idea about this technology. I met this man and he took me to Don Bosco to learn this technique. We then went to industrial area to see the machine. Later, uh, we went to his rural home in Unguja, where I started making the bricks. Upon your society, upon your can gain your experience. However, Odongo cautions that before this technology is used, proper surveys have to be carried out. But uh, we have also to look at other issues. We have to be sure that uh, the, the safety standards are maintained. And, and that means that such products should also be sold with some kind of uh, direction concerning uh, their use or applicability and areas where it shouldn't be. And that kind of information should be given by the producers to people. And that is important. But also when somebody comes to the council, you will have to declare, because you have to specify materials that you are going to use. Then we would be able to advise at that point. But today, with a few years of experience and determination, Kinyo has fully embraced this technology. The first day, I was only able to make 17 bricks. Now I make 415 a day. My boss calls it the Lord's miracle. It's not only helping to conserve the environment, he says it has changed his life completely. Before I started this business, I couldn't even afford school fees for my children. It was paid for by President Mwaikibaki in the free education program. I have also opened a small business for my wife. Well, you may be wondering what makes this BRICS environmentally friendly. The first thing is that we have to cut down trees in the kiln baking. But with this, you don't. Traditionally, bricks are made inside a kiln, requiring a lot of wood to keep the fire in the kiln burning. But like you can see, no trees need to be felled for this. Very little water is required for mixing the bricks. It's economical as the bricks are waterproof, hence there is no need to plaster the building's exterior. Notice how the bricks interlock. Due to the interlocking mechanism, little cement is required. Subsoil has its own natural paste. We use 10 wheelbarrows of subsoil and mix it with only a bag of cement. In one bag of cement, it gives us 140 to 160 with a small machine. But with a big one over there, I make between 80 to 100. It's advantageous because the only other place that you'll be required to use cement is at the corners of the walls. The use of interlocking blocks reduces the cost of construction between 50 and 70 percent. Code 95 was a planning effort to try to bring the standards uh, down to, to accept certain materials that were not accepted originally so that people can be able to access some materials that were not very costly, like the interlocking. That, that one is now appreciated. 
even uh, compressed oil that is that is that's being used currently the construction sector has been booming in the past years powered by the middle class and business class who largely have access to credit and mortgage but with the stringent bank requirements and hard economic times, maybe it's time that we rethink ways of not only cutting down on costs, but using eco-friendly methods for construction. Now, the idea of making blocks by compacting earth or mixing it with stabilizing supplements is a timeless practice dating back thousands of years. Previously and still customarily in certain parts of the world, wooden molds are used for making sun-dried or burnt blocks. But with the destruction of the environment through tree cutting, it's no longer a welcome idea to many governments. It has really helped me. I urge people to adapt this so they can protect the environment. I'll continue teaching them. As you can see, it's also creating employment for the youth. An old man cannot do this. And with so many blocks a day, all you need is one experienced artisan to ensure that the blocks are level while building, making it even cheaper to construct. If you put this here, it's already locked. The only thing you need is a mason to check if it's level. With changing times, technology plays a key role in the growth of any nation. There is need for people to embrace such innovative techniques. I have built so many. One in Kodiago, three in Sagam, and 12 in Mulamula. And the list is endless. Kinyua has amassed a wealth of knowledge in this craft. He is willing to share the knowledge, but at a small fee. Few know that the Ministry of Housing has an advanced hydrofoil interlocking machine in every provincial headquarter. However, our efforts to contact the Director of Housing to find out its availability for possible usage by communities were futile. The Mazingira crew will follow this up and bring you updates on the availability of hydrofoil machines in the provinces. But even if you'll not access the government machine, the manual machine is made here in Kenya and is locally available. The director of city planning agrees that this indeed is a safe and economical technology to use, but people should follow regulation set to ensure safety. Every application has to be cautious of the, the environmental circumstances that, that we have. You don't use anything anywhere, so in a flood zone, you use that kind of locking thing. Certainly you will have certain problem. We have reduced approval time to 30 days. Long before people could say that I would, I've got money, I'll just build, because it will take ages to get approval from the council. We have reduced approval time to 30 days maximum. If your plan is not good, we are, giving, we are, we are given only 15 days to comment on it and then you should be able to react to the comments that we have raised. So it means that the delivery time of building per construction permission has been shortened. So people have no, 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 rea no reason really not to comply. And again, it is not costly. Because if you do a bad development, it will be very, very costly to sort it out if you, are not, if you did not enjoy the technical advice that goes with the approval process. For Kinyua, Embracing technology is key to a country's development, but he cautions that it has to start at individual level. Traditional kiln brick making contributes to air pollution, soil erosion and degradation, desertification of the landscape, and reduces available fuel resources for other human activities. In agricultural regions, these consequences are especially detrimental and contribute to the food insecurity and sometimes create fuel conflict over the limited resources. Therefore, there is need for governments, organizations and communities to raise awareness on alternative fuels and kiln construction or other eco-friendly construction technologies in order to increase production rates and reduce environmental impact.